This video demonstrates how to perform a web protocol level record and replay. From the Silk Performer Workbench, click the Start Here button, which will allow you to create a new project. This will display the Outline Project dialog, where you can see a list of the available project types within Silk Performer. The most commonly used would be the Web Business Transaction, which is highlighted by default. This is used for recording web protocol level scripts. Other options you'll see include Web Browser Driven, which is used for Web 2.0 applications, SAP, Citrix, Java, .NET and many more. It's important to choose the correct project type for your application and, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll work with the Web Business Transaction project type. You should then give your project a suitable name and a description if required, and then click Next. This will take you to the Model Script dialog. Here you will see the selected application profile is set to Internet Explorer by default. If you wish to use a different browser, you can click on the drop-down and make your selection. By default, Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome are all automatically included. Below this is the URL section, where you should enter the URL of the application you wish to test. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will use the Borland demo application. You will also see below the three available recording options. An important step before you start recording is to clear the browser cache and cookies. We will be using Internet Explorer, so this shows the process here. It's also advised to have the default web page set to About Blank. When this is complete, we can then start the recording. When the recording starts, you'll see the application appear in the browser. The function count on the recorder will then start to increase. There are a number of options available in the recorder, one of which being the ability to create your own custom timers, which will automatically be entered into the script. You can place these around groups of actions that you want to time together. To create your own custom timer, click the Start Timer button and give the timer an appropriate name. Now carry out the actions you want to be included. When complete, select the Stop Timer option. Then select the name of the timer you're stopping and click OK. Continue to browse through the application, taking the required actions. Here we're simply making a purchase. Another useful option available in the recorder is the ability to add your own comments to the script during record. To do this, click on the Insert Comment button and enter the required details. Continue browsing through the application until you've carried out the required actions. Here we are entering details to check out after making our purchase. Be sure to close the application before you stop the recorder. This will ensure that there are no redundant hooks left behind. Name your script, keeping in mind that you could have multiple scripts per project, and save the recording. This will display the capture file page. On the capture file page you can adjust a variety of settings, like resolving potential problems, applying filters, or setting recording rules. When you're done, click Generate Script. You will now be displayed with the script you've just recorded. Here you will see a measure start function. This is the start of the timer that we entered during record. This continues to the measure stop function and provides a combined time for all the actions in between. Further down the script, we can also see the comment we entered during record. The next step in the workflow is running a try script. The try script is a one user run and is designed to ensure that your script is running as expected and to address any issues before trying to run your test. You'll now see a dialog which shows you the script that you're running and which profile and user group is selected. These last two options are covered in more detail in a later tutorial. When the try script is complete, you can step through the actions and the rendered view will show the pages that have been selected during record. A green tick on a step shows that it has been successful. On the Measure Stop function, you will see the duration of the timer, telling you the length of time taken for all steps within the timer to execute. Here you will see steps marked with a red X, indicating that they have failed. When we click on it, we see that the application reports the error Session Timed Out. The Info tab contains a more detailed message on the error and shows that the server returns an error code. 
This is as designed, as we've not yet performed any script customization. The next video in this series will deal with customizing session information and adding verifications to your script.